Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Andy Arnott and Amy Weiss. And this is Seller Roundtable number 22. And we are super excited and privileged to have Stephen Black on today to uh, talk to us about uh, marketing hacks for Amazon. And uh, he's also going to give us uh, probably a little bit of backstory. And, uh, and we're going we're gonna to geek out and, and uh, go deep on marketing, which is one of my favorite uh, subjects. So yes. welcome, Stephen, and thanks so much for, uh, for being on today. Thank you so much, Andy. I've, I've been looking forward to, to speaking on the podcast and helping people and, and just sharing what's in my head, just like every other day. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So Stephen, welcome. Um, I have been in your Facebook group for quite a while here and you know, it was actually recommended in other groups and I heard about you and I'm like, how did I not know about this guy earlier? And you just give out some great, uh, some great information and uh, you're not afraid to share. And those are the kind of folks that we love to have on our podcast. So thank you so much for being here. Well, thank, and, you, thank you. And I would love to, you know, just tell us about you, where you're born, where you live now, kind of what, what brings us to this podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the very short version, um, uh, started life in Tampa, Florida, uh, middle teenage years, went to Atlanta, Georgia. And for the last 13 years, I've been in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I have been in marketing of some form or fashion for about 12, 13 years now, something silly like that. Um, yeah, it's about that long now that I think about it. Um, started out, you know, with, with sales jobs and, you know, worked for a couple other people, went into, um, I had my own brick and mortar uh, businesses, learned how to market through that. And um, what brought us here today, uh, a few years ago, I started researching uh, more of the Amazon model. I've always been a marketer, always been a marketer is, is you know, for, for a long time, understood, you know, copywriting and, and, you know, getting people in the door and converting them and blah, blah, blah. But Amazon caught my eye about three years ago because I was looking for a way to get out of, of the brick and mortar stuff. Right. Um, and I started, uh, the first thing I, I heard about it was the wholesale model, uh, where people, you know, would, would buy into a uh, distributor or from the brand themselves and sell those products as one of the sellers on Amazon. Um, I don't do that now, um, but I had an opportunity to, to renew my lease or take the jump and uh, go deep with what I was doing. And I had gotten into lead generation for some of the people that were my regular clients, my brick and mortars. And uh, I had gotten into e-com outside of Amazon. I've been doing that a couple of years, but then, you know, Amazon uh, came calling and um, shout out to Matt Loberstein. I talked to him. Uh, he's, he's a big YouTube Amazon guy. And uh, I, I spoke with him. I was like, yo, tell me about Amazon, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, you're already a marketer. You understand funnels and everything else. So you're like eight miles ahead of everybody else. And what was interesting is over the years that I've been looking into Amazon, everybody that I've ever seen on Amazon that is around Amazon or talks about Amazon that's the point. They talk about Amazon. That's it. It's everything is about the Amazon platform or, you know, better ways to run on platform ads and blah, blah. I'm like, no, you guys are missing the boat. You haven't even started yet. You're not even in kindergarten. You poor things. I know y'all are making a ton of money, but good Lord. And so I just started opening my mouth because that's what I could help with. And my group uh, is, it's almost 11 months old. Uh, and we have over 6,000 members. I have never advertised it once. Never once. And honestly, I, I, did, I only started it as, as a place to bookmark my marketing thoughts so I could share them with other people because I get asked all the time. Um, you know, I, I, I travel around, I speak. Uh, I'm going next month to do an international speakership with one of the biggest Facebook ads uh, specialists in the world. He's actually an advisor to Facebook UK. And he reached out to me and said, dude, I want you at my private mastermind with these people. And I want you to talk all about your content stuff and you know everything you do like that. I want you to bring that stuff. I'm like, okay. 
So, <laughs> so I just, all I do is, you know, I share. And I get asked a lot, why do I share so much? Well, two reasons. Number one, that's the free stuff. As far as I'm concerned, I have a whole lot behind, behind the curtain over here, <laughs> you know, Wizard of Oz kind of stuff, but it helps people out a lot. Uh, and to tail on that, the second reason, everything that I share to drive a conversation, anything that I can drop, people are like, oh, that's gold. No, no, no. That's me dropping it on your head to see what pops back out at me and puts me in a different perspective to try to help problem solve. And the more I sharpen that sword, the more I get better at what I'm doing. So easy stuff there. Awesome. Well, and you didn't mention didn't. that, uh, you, you didn't mention about college. Uh, what happened with college, Stephen? I don't believe in college. I don't Tell believe in college. That. I'm very sorry. Um, <laughs> oh boy, here we go. <laughs> dropped out of college after two semesters um, because I knew that I wanted to do my own thing and um, college does not teach you how to monetize your own creativity, even marketing degrees. They teach you to take orders. They teach you that if you have this GPA and this piece of paper from this place, you can get a job, which is the middle class trap that now we're all Amazon sellers trying to escape and you get debt that you can't ever get rid of, that like, I was like, no, 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 no. And my other beef with it, as I quickly realized is, why at 18 years old are they trying to give me $100,000 that I can never erase from myself without any knowledge of forecasting the economic viability of my spend here? That's something nobody talks about. Like, what am I gonna need to be able to do with this to pay this back and live the life I want. If that doesn't match up, why am I there? Yeah. So off I went to do that, to do other things, just what it was. And I, I love that. It. And I, it, I, it cost we, me a lot of personal stuff over the years, my ambition, but I got hungry. It was fun. <laughs> Seems like you're doing okay now. So yeah. I think, I think we'll be all right without, without <laughs> a college degree. Right. Yeah. So you said one other thing when we were talking about this previously, you talked yep. about something else you did for 20 years. Yeah. Okay. All right. So everybody that's, that's heard the story. I was a professional ballroom dancer for about 20 years. I had, and it's honestly, it's honestly what helped me cut my teeth on my model of marketing because I didn't have this endless sea of internet clients that could buy from me on my store or my Amazon listing all over the world. Like we have now. I had a local market of maybe a few hundred people, okay? And so I had to survive. I had to quickly figure out how to get those people to buy over and over and over and over again. And that's not because they're looking for a better staccato action in their tango. And it's not because they want, you know, a smoother timing of their, 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 their Cuban motion in their rumba. It wasn't about that. So... I, I quickly figured out how I was going to teach every lesson and I figured that every lesson was the advertisement to then get them to buy more lessons. They were just paying me to consume the content and every single lesson was set up and the, my methodology of teaching, I reworked the way I, that I taught things. It was set up so that I could put them in the hero's position. They weren't coming in again to learn to dance. They were coming in because something about the activity of dancing in their mind took them to who they wanted to be. If I learned this skill, if it's this magic bullet, if I do this, I will become who I covet to be. If it's, if it's you know, the, 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 the heavier girl's been heavy all of her life, all she wants is not to lose weight. She wants to not be ignored by her peers. She wants to feel like she moves more smoothly. She wants to feel like she belongs to something that she admires. And she's, because of, you know, whatever her own mind has, has, has put her in, she's ostracized herself from those opportunities her whole life. She come and sees me and I give her that on the dance floor, she'll pay through the nose. You'll pay for that inclusion because I'm giving you who you want to be. You don't need to come and dance, but I'm giving you what you want the most. Easy stuff. And I figured it out and I got repeat business. And my first year 
selling dance lessons. I think it had like $280,000 in dance lessons at a local market. And every year since it did like 400, 400 plus thousand dollars in dance lessons in a local market. It was dumb. I love it. That's so awesome. That, That's that marketing that right world. there. Yeah. Everybody's take- waiting for the sign up link. <laughs> <laughs> I Where do I learn to dance? Well, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What, the way that I got people to, the, the way that I hooked people, it was really easy because I didn't ask them to come and dance. Everybody is terrified of dancing because they have to think, oh, I don't have any rhythm or I, I can't dance with another person. It's, you know, I can't lead or follow or blah. No, no, no. I don't want you to think. I, I figured out a way to teach to where it was reactionary to your own little tick and rhythm. And we could both move in harmony across the floor. I, the, 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 the line was, the challenge was, the I dare you headline hook was to get people through the door. If you give me an hour of your time, I'll make it to where you can take anybody you want to any dance floor forever. That's it. I just need an hour. You know, that, that's all I need. You don't have to come back. I promise. If you give me one hour, you can take your missus downtown to the bar and you can dance her any time that you want in any setting without being forced and without having to think about it. Done. So we might have to we might have to talk Stephen into giving us a little uh, dance lesson here Ridiculous. on this but, uh, but podcast. That was the whole thing. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't try to sell functionality. I sold risk reversal. I sold risk reversal. You got nothing to lose, and I'm calling out the thing that you're most afraid of. You don't want to look like a moron in front of your significant other, or you don't want to look like a moron if you're going out trying to pick somebody up. Okay, you give me an hour, one hour. That's all I want. I get you in the door. It's over for you. And then we had our groups. We had parties. We had like 160 people every single Friday night as a regular thing to come and dance. We had so many people. I was part of this like strip mall thing. And there was a Thai restaurant that was in the same shopping mall. And my landlord and I had to end up uh, renegotiating the lease because we had so many people on a Friday night. He couldn't even sell his pickup orders. People couldn't pull in the parking lot to pick up their food. It was ridiculous. Like I got yelled at for that when we had to renegotiate the lease. <laughs> but, but that was what it is. It was just repeat business. And so when I came to the online world, I wasn't, okay, I got to get people to buy. I didn't understand that idea. I was waiting for the other shoe to drop when I started learning some of the online ad stuff. And I was like, are you guys really not putting all of your effort into customer retention? Like the easiest money you know, or sorry, what is, what is the phrase that I coined a little while ago? Um, the money you've already taken in is the easiest money to make again. If you've already bought in, you've already committed to me. I'm just taking you out on another date. Give you another reason to see me again. It's easy. So my, my, all of my, my entire model is set up around that is giving you a reason for me to be your favorite drug dealer. That's what it is. Thanks for tuning in. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at SellerRoundTable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, SellerSEO.com and AmazingAtHome.com.